Howdy folks, Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the next version that will soon be released of WebDriver IO, also known as version 5. They're currently on 4.13. Oh, sorry, it's 4.14. Looks like they recently updated it. But uh, hopefully version 5 will be out soon. If you're familiar with WebDriver IO, it is an open source tool put together to run WebDriver tests from Node.js. But you use it for testing websites. You can run different scripts. Here's one that it uh, opens Google and then takes a snapshot of the page. This is using Apple Tools, really cool tool. And um, yeah, it's kind of the gist of, of WebDriver. I've got many videos on WebDriver. If you want to check them out, I'll put a link up in the corner to um, one that I'd recommend starting off with. So let's check out the guide. This is the brand new website. So this is um, beta.webdriver.io. So this is what the website's going to look like once um, the new version comes out. Just a little different style overall. But we're going to take a look at this getting started page. And basically what I want to do is go through the steps of getting the new version running. So here it talks about downloading WebDriver IO. We're actually going to skip over this step because this is using WebDriver IO through Node, um, not using the command line version. Um, you can do it this way, but 99% of the time don't really want to use it this way. So we'll skip through that and start on this let's get serious section. Uh, the first major change that we're going to look at is you're actually going to install a CLI client. Instead of just running npm install WebDriver IO, there is a separate CLI command line utility that you're going to use instead. So we'll go and copy that over, and I'll open up a terminal. Okay, my terminal's open. I'm going to make a new directory, call it v5test, jump into there, and I'm going to initialize npm using npm init-y, and then I'll run my npm install command. Okay, and with that installed, I can generate my config file. So I can copy this over. I can run it like this. Uh, one new thing that I've started doing is using the npx command. This is a npm command that comes when you install npm, which I believe npm comes when you install Node.js. But you can actually just run um, WDIO, and that's kind of a shortcut for this Node modules bin directory. Um, it'll. Oh, I think I remember seeing this issue. Why? Not find module build. I can't remember why I saw this issue, but I think I do remember seeing this issue. So uh, I'll go back to just sticking with this WDI config. So I'll run this and same thing, cannot find module build. Oh, you know why? I think I have to install a specific version of the CLI uh, client. That's what's going on. So I'm going to rmrf node modules and this video. Uh, these errors and stuff, you may may not have to do this if you're watching this in a few months. Hopefully the, the full beta is coming out. Um, if you're trying it out today, you'll probably run into the same, or today being October 25th, um, you'll probably run into the same issue. So if I go into packages, uh, one of the big changes with the WebDriver IO setup is how it's architected, how it's organized. It's more of a mono repo. That means everything's in a single repo instead of everything being uh, separate repos. So if I go to the main WebDriver IO page, you see we have like Grunt WebDriver, Go Up WebDriver, WebDriver or Cucumber Framework. So those are separate repos and everything. This, we kind of throw it all the way in here. So I think, i oh, surprised. I was expecting to see Cucumber Framework in here, but yeah, these used to all be separate repos and now we're all in a single repo and it kind of helps keep things more organized and everything. But if we go into the WDIO CLI, repo. You can see the version is 5.beta, 5.0.beta3. Let's open my package JSON. That's what I can do. The version number here is alpha 7. Um, I, this needs to be beta 3. So what I'm going to do is npm i save dev w at 5.0.beta.3. We're going to have to do this a few times. So I'm glad I kind of forgot this because, well, it would have been nicer if I didn't forget it because I could have just shown it right away. But yeah, this is kind of the stuff, at least that error message. Uh, if you run across that error message, it'll hopefully make more sense to you. Okay, so now it's updated. Now you can see it's updated in my package JSON file. Let's move that over. Um, now I'm going to try running npx wdio. There we go. Okay, so I remember seeing that error and that's why. Um, 
It, first question, it's a new question. Where should your test be launched? This isn't um, something that used to be there. Um, you can do local or Lambda. Lambda runs on um, kind of an outside server. And this is something I, I really hope to cover in a future episode. Let's get that text size up a little bit to help with um, anybody on a smaller resolution. Um, yeah, so I want to get into Lambda at some point, but for now I'm going to stick with local. That means it'll just run locally for me. Uh, I'll test local, use Mocha. Going to answer yes to all the installs for me. I'll run sync or async. It never used to ask you this, but um, we're going to stick with sync. Most people are going to stick with sync. I'll leave the default here as far as where the test specs are located. And then uh, let's go ahead and turn on spec reporting. There's a bunch of other reporters, but I like spec. It's pretty good, pretty simple. Um, any integrations, I am gonna go with Selenium standalone so that I don't have to start my own Selenium server. Chrome driver is also pretty good, but you do have to install some extra stuff for that, I think. I wonder if they updated that, but I'll just stick with Selenium standalone for now. And then um, here's another change that they've made is the logging verbosity. Um, these are different levels. Um, it used to be like verbose, um, used to be one, command used to be one. Um, I think they used to be a little bit different. So um, if you are upgrading to version five from version four, that's something to pay, pay attention to. It will throw an error if um, you've got the verbosity as a different keyword than this. I'll go with info. And the base URL I wanna test, let's go back to our getting started guide. Let's see what they say. Okay, so they just say localhost. Okay, they say localhost, but then they go to WebDriver IO. I'm just gonna um, put WebDriver IO in there. Okay, so it's gonna install everything. Okay, we've got everything installed. Um, it says to run your test, just use this command. I'm surprised they said that because if I actually did that, it's gonna tell me that that is weird. Why would it? Why would it reference that directory? I swear that's not a plug. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Anyway, I don't know why um, that should be different. Um, I want to make a note of that. But, so I made a note of that. I'm going to copy over this make directory and come back to my terminal, paste that in. And the reason this doesn't work, just calling it uh, WDIO, is so WDIO refers to node modules.bin slash WDIO. It refers to this specific executable file. And if you just call this, the terminal, the command line doesn't know that it should be looking in here. And that's why we use that npx WDIO because it npx is installed globally. So I could say which npx and it has a path to that. What if I do which WDIO? Oh, that's, oh, that's why. So that I could, because when I want to switch to editing this, uh, like getting into that directory and everything, um, I set up a little alias a long time ago to um, make it easier for me to switch to that directory. And I never got rid of that alias. So when it tried to do that, it was trying to do something weird with it. And I don't even have a dub 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 folder anymore. I switched that over to something else. So I just need to get rid of that um, at some point. But anyway, I'm going to move that up so that you don't have to look so far down on your screen. Um, things that you think I would have learned in recording these videos over the past few years is how to present everything correctly. But anyway, um, let's go into, so we have that directory, I'll go into there. So test specs, and then I'm going to touch the test.js file. And then I do have an alias for sublime text, st. Um, if I do which st, ah, it just um, is alias to sub l. So I think I could actually just do that. Yes, I can. Uh, and if I do which sub l, um, it's just a little function that calls uh, the sublime path and passes in any files, any arguments. So when you, it, it basically opens sublime text, passing in the, this text, which sublime text recognizes as a file. 
and opens it for you. So it's an empty file. So we're going to copy this content in and paste it. And then instead of doing that full URL, I'll just do dot slash. And then we're going to get the title of the page and assert that it's equal. OK. And that'll be our test. Now to run our test in here, there's a, several different ways we can run this. So we can use the one that they recommended in here as wdio.wdio.conf. That passes in the configuration file. You actually don't have to pass in the configuration file. Um, it will automatically look for the configuration file in that specific um, directory uh, using that specific name. And if it finds it, it'll just use it. Um, and then the other thing is, like I said, uh, we can just run npx wdio instead. Ah, is that a new change that you have to have? Oh, you know what? It's not a new change. Sorry, I need to be in the right directory. Another mistake on my part. I need to be in the directory that has this file in it. I was in the test specs file, and so it wasn't finding it. That is actually a common issue that um, gets seen. OK, so nothing happened. Like that happened, but nothing outside of that happened. Why did nothing happen? I ran across this issue when I was testing this out. And why was it? So I'm going to open that configuration file. And let's see. So we're looking at test specs. Test specs. I've got that. Test.js. I've got that. That's fine. Browser name. Maybe, that, maybe I need that to be Chrome instead of Firefox. Let's try that. That didn't do it. One thing, um, this has not been updated. Webdriver IO, Selenium standalone, Mocha Ops, that all looks good. So is it running this line? Let's see if I put that there. Yeah, so it does load the file. Uh, does it load this file? No, it's not actually loading that spec file. Test specs, dot slash test slash specs. OK, I'm going to do some quick debugging for a minute. OK, so I remember now. I remember what happened. And if I go back to my package JSON, you may notice that we've got alpha 7 here for the local runner. And so when uh, we ran that configuration file and we asked it to install everything, it uh, because this is still in beta, it installed all the wrong packages. So all of these packages need to be 5.0 beta 3. So that one, uh, Mocha Framework as well, Selenium Standalone Service, Spec Reporter, and Sync. So if I go back to this GitHub page, and so if I look at the local runner, and in the package JSON, you see it's at version 5, beta 3. Same thing with Mocha Framework. If I go to package JSON, see that it's 5, beta 3. So uh, that's one thing to, to pay attention to if you're trying to use this beta, is you are going to have to work through uh, these version numbers. So once I update it, that in my package JSON, I can run um, rm-rf node modules. So that's going to remove the node modules directory. And then npm i, which will basically reinstall everything. So I actually have aliases command myself to be um, npm nuke. Um, and it, it just runs that whole thing. So if I do which npm nuke, you can see it's just aliased to that. And actually, I, I removed the package lock um, in case I, I really want to get the latest stuff. So that way, I can just run npm nuke. Um, neat little alias there to, to kind of make reinstalling all my dependencies a little bit simpler. So now I'll run npx wdio. And you see it's taking a lot longer. So that's positive. And now it's running my test. We see the browser pop up. Go to the page. And now it's got that passing. So that's kind of how the new output looks like. One thing that I want to get into is 
the way that it does this output, I don't know if you can see, and this was really confusing to me, but basically the way it manages the screen, I don't know if you saw that that time amount was climbing up, even though it was still the same screen, that counter was going up. And it does that by kind of doing some weird terminal stuff. And one issue with that method is that it creates this duplication. So here and here, this is basically the same thing. So it's not that it ran three separate times. It's just that if you scroll up after all that output, you're gonna see that it looks like it ran three times. This is at least my best guess as to what's going on. I really don't think it's run three times. I thought, when I first saw it, I was like, why in the world did it run three times? I only have a single test, why would it do that? I don't think that's the case. I think that's just the way that everything is output, is that um, in order to have that effect, that kind of dynamic look to it, um, it has this side effect. I don't know if that can be fixed or, it's, or if it's something that has to do with the specific way I have my terminal set up, um, but that is just something to be aware of. So that's the basics of the, the changes as far as getting set up running. Um, there is a ticket out just kind of saying, tracking what's going on in version five. Um, lots of interesting information in this ticket. I'll link to it in the description of this video. Yeah, I'm just gonna scroll through and see if there's anything worth mentioning. Cool. Um, if I've gotten anything wrong in this video, please let me know. That would be great. And let me, if I go to releases, you can keep kind of track of what the latest release is by going to the GitHub page and checking out the release. So the beta three came out 27 days ago. Probably we'll be getting another beta soon, I would imagine. Um, if you want to see the, the beta lives on the master branch, if you want to get back to version four, you can go to the V4 branch. Um, and that brings you back to the way things used to be, or I guess currently are. Um, but yeah, that's all on master. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. If you have any issues, not sure how they're doing um, issues for V5 versus version four. Let me check labels. I was wondering if there was anything on um, to do version three. No, I don't see anything specifically labeled for version five, but maybe that would be something that we'd want to start doing is having version five in there. You can also check the, the versions on NPM JS. So we'd go to WDIO CLI. And if you go into versions, you can see these are kind of the current tags. So there's actually a tag for next. So if you wanted to, you could also do npm i wdio cli at next. Um, and that should, if I'm correct, that should bring you to this, um, this version for everything. So yeah, version five has been um, in development for quite some time now. So it'll be, it'll be a good, good release, good update. Um, let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Um, I may do a follow-up video to this one in a few weeks just to take another look um, at what's changed. And uh, once it is released, um, I'm definitely going to have to go back and update some of my videos. I'm going to have to go back and yeah, update quite a few of my videos, and um, including my course. I'm trying to avoid having to do all those recordings on my course again, but I don't think there's a way around that because of the new way of running everything and the new output and all that stuff. It's just gonna, yeah, there's just gonna be too much information out of date, but that'll give me a good chance to kind of rework some of the content and um, inherit and incorporate some of the feedback that a lot of people have given me, a lot of great feedback out there. Uh, so hopefully you can help out with that. So thanks for listening and, um, Try out, try out the new version and let me know what you think about it. Have a good one.